Hello Artlings, it is Friday, May 15th, and that means it's time for another edition of Mrs. Vallow's Messy Desk. do have mail this time. Uh, I know last week I said to you guys that I have mail, but I actually did get some mail from a friend of mine uh, over at the Fort Bend County, used to be OEM, now it's HS some or another. Anyway, the county organization that helps keep us in Fort Bend all informed and safe. I'll read it to you. Stevie, Mrs. Vallow, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Question for you. Are you doing remote art project with your students? If you are, there's been a lot of focus on the frontline workers during this COVID thing that we're, I'm adding there, during COVID. That said, we have a lot of back-end workers at the county who have been working hard and could use some love. If you're looking for a project for your kiddos, do you think they could make posters or cards for the following groups? And then she goes on to outline the different groups who've been working very, very hard um, behind the scenes uh, during this time of distancing and uncertainty. So it got me thinking, kind of missed the boat on Mother's Day uh, and doing a card thing then, but why not now, right? Why not now? There are so many people that could use recognition, whether it be your little brother for not driving you crazy for five minutes, for your mom for tirelessly cooking all of your meals, to your neighbor who delivers uh, for Meals on Wheels, to your teachers who have been working so hard to um, help you guys through this. So there's a million different people to thank Right? And since we all can't just jump out to the grocery store or to the uh, greeting card store and go buy a card, we should do some things about making your own cards. Something simple and fun to everyone behind the scenes. Ta -da! A pop-up card with a springy thing. Oh my goodness. I mean, wouldn't you like to get a card like that? That's what we're gonna be working on this week is creative ways to make your handmade greetings really have some pizzazz and some pop. I'll be showing you how to create pop-ups and also the little springs that you saw for the heart as well as some cool lettering styles that are pretty simple and can get pretty involved. Your challenge this week is to find someone whether it's a friend or a neighbor or a sibling, a parent, or someone working at an organization that uh, you know, either via your parents or someone else, and send them some love in a really fun, cool way. Could that be making them a physical card? Absolutely. Could that be drawing something for them, taking a picture, and then sending it to them electronically? Absolutely. Could it be staging a video where you take pictures of you moving signs from one to another? Absolutely. But this is our challenge. We're going to find a way to send some love out to some people who need it. If you're a Shady Oak Artling, I have some ideas that I'd like to run past you, but we'll get to that at another time. If you're not a Shady Oak Artling and want to participate in this challenge and ideas, go ahead. There's lots of people that need some love out there. If you'd like to post your creations on social media, you know where to find me. You tag at the art and makerspace and I will see it. And if you don't want to tag it, that's okay. Go find somebody to send some love to. Okay, so I'm done talking. If you would like to stick around for the rest of the video, what you will see is some uh, instructions and tutorials on how to make pop-ups and little springs in your cards, plus do uh, both simple dress-ups, bubble, letter, bubble, letters, bubble letters, and block lettering uh, to make your personal communications have some pizzazz. All right, if you don't wanna watch, don't watch. If you do wanna watch, keep going, and maybe you'll learn some. Until next time, see ya later.
how to make the paper springs. Really, all you need is two strips of paper. You want to make sure that they are the same width or it's not going to work right. So I tore mine. As you can see, the edges are kind of frayed. You can cut it, doesn't matter. But the way you start is to take two ends and overlap them at a 90 degree angle. So you want one on the bottom, one on the top. And you are going to start folding each strip alternately. I'm going to start with the one on the bottom. This one's the one on the top. Start with the one on the bottom. And I'm going to fold it right here straight up. And so now it is on the top. And I want to try to keep it as close to perpendicular and straight as I can. Now I'm going to fold this one and I'm going to fold it over. Now it's on top, so I'm going to fold the bottom one. Now it's on top, so I'm going to fold this one over. And you just keep going until you run out of paper. I'm almost out of paper. I'm going to fold this one down or up, this one up, and then I'm going to pick it up. And at this point, you can start tucking your paper under so that it secures it. You could glue that down. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I've got kind of these flippy floppy ends. I could do the same thing where I folded one under or I could just glue that, but I'll probably end up tearing this off because it's in my way. Um, now we have this cute little paper spring and I'll glue these two together. But imagine it's on a card. I'll do it on the side. <laughs> and it comes with that side effect, by the way. Um, but there's your little paper spring that once you put it on some, put glue something right here and then glue this to the card, as soon as you open the card, it springs out just like that. Now we're going to make the pop-up part of our greeting card. So depending on whether you want it to open left or right, the easiest pop-up is for cards that will kind of open like this and it'll have a bottom and a top. So like a lid. And you are going to want to either get a ruler or something to measure with. I'll do both. We'll start with a ruler. And you're going to want to measure out an area right here on the spine of the outside of your card. You are going to take, and I've got just this little triangle ruler right here, whatever ruler you have will work. And from the middle of your card, which mine is, this is uh, 4.25 inches. It's a no, excuse me, it's five and a half. <laughs> Just kidding. Five and a half because it's half a sheet of paper. I'm going to mark the middle of my card. You could also eyeball this if you want, but I'm actually going to mark it. So the middle of five and a half is two and a quarter. No. Yeah, two and three quarters. I can do math. It's like that did not look right. There's the middle of my card. And I'm going to measure from the middle. And I'll just start at one because it's easy. I'm going to measure about half an inch. Let's see if that'll make a good spot half an inch from either side of the middle. And that'll make a pretty good flap. So about an inch wide, and here's where. And I'm also going to measure, oh, I like an inch. An inch seems like a good number. I'm gonna measure an inch down and draw a line from each of these points here. And then on those marks, I will connect them. That's going to be my folding mark right here. I'm not going to cut this. Nope, nope, nope. Now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut these lines right here. An alternate way to do this is to take something like a small set of post it notes that you know is square and I'm going to flip it over. Use your post it note to measure your flap. Um, maybe we'll do a half a post it note. I'm going to eyeball it, put it somewhere in the middle, and then I would cut these two lines right here. So you can do it that way too. But the idea is to get this 
flap that's going to fold to the inside and you're going to need these lines to be the same length so even if you do it that way or if you measure it like i do either way i'm going to cut on the lines that i measure i'm only going to cut to the end of the line there okay so now what i'm going to do is open my card flat and you can see where my other lines were they'll go away eventually and i am going to end up folding right here on this line so you can do it a couple of different ways you can open your card and now you see kind of where this little pop-up thing is starting it should kind of fold itself once you fold it back down push it to the inside and fold it back down it was like that so I picked it up and I kind of poked it to the inside and then I folded it down and it did it did its own little thing right there so now what you have is a platform to put something on so that it would open up. I would, you could draw right here, you could draw right here, but just for the sake of what we're doing, I'll take my little sticky note and I'm just gonna stick it right here just so you can see what's gonna happen. So when I close my card, do it from the side, when I close my card, you guys can see where that little sticky note is going. It's gonna fold flat. So when you place your object, you're gonna place it, glue it onto this little flap, but leave a little breathing room, and I'll show you up close. Little, Leave a little breathing room down here so that it's not flush with the card, and that way it'll fold nice and flat, like that. And then when you open it up, boing, just like that. And the, the viewer could probably look at the card like this, and you could have something drawn back here, and then maybe here, you can also cut multiple ones of these and have multiple pop-ups, but that gets really confusing. So this kind of design is super easy to do, and that's all you need to do is cut this cute little flap in the back, and it makes a pop-up card. Pretty simple. What do you do to cover that little hole up? If you don't want that hole showing up in your card, which understandably some people don't, you can either take another folded card and glue it onto the outside so that it covers both sides, or you could take a piece of paper that's the same size as this card and just glue it right on top. The top part then would be covered and then you'd have a hole in the bottom. Uh, it just really depends on what you want to do. You could just leave it like this with a chunk taken out. I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you want it to look super finished, maybe cover both sides, glue it in. I would suggest doing all of your decoration on the inside first though. Bubble letters, these are probably my favorite. What you're going to need is a pencil. Uh, and I will be using colored pencils because you really can't see this one very well. Um, but pencil and then your colored pencils. And I have done this so much that I just go for it. But if you're new to bubble lettering or balloon lettering, you'll probably want to draw your words first with your pencil. And so I'm gonna start under here. And you can draw guidelines if you want. I don't, I just go for it because I'm not do. I'm just practicing right now. So. What you should start with is all caps close together. And I'm, I'm going to draw these kind of dark, but you would draw them lightly because you're either going to erase them or draw over them. And depending on what kind of letters you make will determine how your letters go. So you guys can see that. And I am going to, now that I've got my phrase written out, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go around the outside like you would a block letter except all the junctions and pieces are going to have curves in them. And you kind of take your pick. Sometimes I don't put the little smile under here under an A and sometimes I might put one here for the U. Uh, it just depends on how you want to do it. But I start at the beginning and then every other letter of the word goes underneath. So my T, and I'm going to do this kind of light so I can go back and erase it my T and how big you make it is up to you and you see it crosses over the H because the H is going to start behind and as you can already tell it's not perfect 
and you're gonna have a lot of wiggle room. Then you just go and you start outlining all of your letters in kind of this bubble or balloon. And that T might be a little big. I might, I might go back and make it a little smaller. And I'm drawing pretty dark, so it's gonna be hard for me to erase, but hopefully you guys are drawing really lightly. And then I do the same thing for the Y. I write my Ys with a curve, but for the bubble letters, I'm going to do kind of this little sharp point right there. And then put the other letter behind as much as you can. Makes it look like it's been stuck together. And I'm gonna try with the little thing on the U maybe this time, I don't know. I think it looks better like that sometimes. And then this will go like that. Now, like I said, I have drawn it very, very dark uh, so that you guys can see it on the screen. I'm gonna color it like I did up here. And so I'm gonna go over my colors or my letters with this blue pencil and maybe then I can erase the middle or maybe I'll just leave it for you guys. But I'm gonna go over the areas that I like um, in the blue and then I'll color it with the pink. And I'm going over these pretty dark because I want my outline to be nice and dark and I already know what's good and what's not because I've done kind of the little rough draft. You can see my letters get smaller. <laughs> it's okay. If I had drawn guidelines, they probably wouldn't do that. But I'm just practicing. And I, you know what? This is not so bad. Kind of looks like an upside down N. So at this point, I could go in and erase my pencil lines. And especially if I was using a marker, you would not be able to see them and the marker would stay. I'm not gonna erase too hard because I'll probably erase my crayon lines and I don't wanna do that. But now I've just got the outlines and so I can go in and color. It's your choice. I'm gonna use a color scheme where I have kind of a light pink, a darker pink, and then a yellow for highlight. You can choose whatever you want, um, but I like to give it a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna use this middle pink and color the whole of the letters pink. And I'm gonna do it fairly lightly because I'm gonna come back in and do some shading. So I'm gonna color all of them pink. Now I've got a base of pink. Now I'm going to come back in and add this kind of darker pink mauve color. And I'm gonna do so by just kind of starting at the bottom of every bubbly part. I come in here and kind of do the bottom strokes just a little bit and the bottom outline just to kind of give it a shadow and a dimension. I don't put any dark pink at the top. You don't need any dark pink at the top. And I put them on the bottoms of most of my strokes. And I may come back in here and do some more. But definitely, the bottom. and I can come back in and a little, a little lightly with the dark pink, bring my stroke up into it a little more if I wanted to. Okay, there's the U. And then I'm gonna come in here to the thank. Wow. All right, now you can add some highlights. I'm gonna use a yellow. Uh, because I don't have a white and I'm going to put some lightness up in the tops and also kind of add a little bit of other color in here so it just looks like I took more time because well I did. I'm going to come to the top of the letters, add some of this highlight color and then I probably will go back in with my middle pink and just fill in a little bit better. 
So now that I have my areas that are highlighted and shadowed, just make it a little bit darker. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a shadow uh, on the bottom. Now I chose green because it's kind of a contrasty color with the pinks and it also it's analogous to the blue but you can choose whatever color shadow you want. If you want the shadow to pop you should choose something that contrasts with this. So if your letters are blue you're going to want to choose maybe like an orange or a yellow shadow. If your uh, letters are purple probably yellow. Um, if your letters are red you probably don't want a pink shadow because it's not going to show up very well. So I'm going to use a green shadow and I'm going to pretend that my light source, I'm going to put this cup kind of right over here, is coming from here. So you'll see that the this edge of the letters have no shadow whatsoever. So the tops for sure have no shadow and this side of the letters has no shadow. So the shadow, like you see up here, is gonna go definitely on the bottom of the letters and then on the far side. So every stroke that is up and down that's on the left side over here gets a shadow. And even a little bit right here because it's on the bottom. So this gets a shadow. Even that gets a little shadow. Um, and is this in perspective? No. Is it perfect? No. It just gives it a quick dimension. You can even put shadow on the inside top of your holes too. That's another good place to put a little shadow because that's where the light doesn't hit. And you can kind of connect your shadow at the bottom. But I'm not going to put any shadow over here because that's on this side of the, with the light side, but I might put a little right here. And I might, nope, because that's on the right side. That's on the light side, so I'm not going to do that. And you can, you can pull your shadow as big as you want it. You can even make it two colors. I can kind of fade it with some light pressure. And then I'm going to go to here. And there you go. There is a bubble letters with a little bit of dimension uh, that you can use on your cards and signs and homemade stuff. Now on to block lettering. Block lettering is a little bit more difficult because of the sharp points. So I usually prefer bubble lettering, but for those of you who want to make some three-dimensional looking letters, this is not the only way to do it by any means. And uh, you will notice lots of different black letters with shadows going in different directions. And this is just one way and it's fairly simple. You start the same way you did with the thank you or the bubble letters and you sketch out what you want to say. And I chose to use lowercase in this example. You don't have to, but I thought I would show you guys what it looks like to use lowercase. And big open letters because you're going to have to go around them. So there's you rock. Let me move it a little bit. And now the, the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line on every end point sharp end point. And you see I skipped some. I'm going to go back to them. You're going to have to decide what to do with some of the letters here. If you notice up here, my C, and I'm going to scoot down, does not look like this. You can make your C look like that. I find that it's more difficult and so with letters like C and K and R, what I usually do is add feet to some of these sticky outy bits in angles, just like I will for the C. So my C, move it up, my C and my K are going to have angled endpoints instead of flat endpoints. Same with the R here. You could have made the R like this 
and come all the way down with it. But I find that's more difficult uh, when doing a hand letter. So that's just a side note. So I'm gonna go back up here. So these letters, their end points are going to be at an angle. And you'll notice the, the curved parts, I did not do any guidelines. We're just gonna kind of wing those. But if you do the feet uh, and end points of your hard lines first, makes it pretty easy to go through so I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm going to kind of draw around the outside of my letters and I'm gonna can use these feet to connect the pieces this letter I'm gonna draw a little bit on the outside and a little bit on the inside uh, the curved letters are pretty much as they are And so when I get to the top of the R, I'm just going to kind of use it as an outline and get it done pretty good. And then again, this one is just kind of itself. <laughs> and then outside and then inside. And you'll see that was a lot easier to do than trying to curl all the way around like I did at the bottom. And then I like the exclamation point to come to a point, so I'm going to ignore this and do it like that and then make a bigger line. Okay, I'm going to use my dark black kind of graphite pencil to do the outlines for this one. Now I'm going to erase. Alright, and I might have to come back in here and darken up some lines, but I might do that later. Shadows. I'm going to do it with a pencil first. You can choose whichever way you want to do your block shadows. I, again, prefer my light kind of coming from this area, so all my shadows kind of go like that. You can do it however you want. You can choose whichever direction you want, but that's kind of... The way that I do it and I might you know just kind of draw a couple of lines around here to make sure I remember but I'm going to do for these block shadows or the the raised parts three-dimensional effect I'm gonna take my pencil I'm gonna do the same thing that I did to block out the letters I'm going to draw except it's not gonna be um, horizontal I'm gonna draw at a 45 degree angle little lines coming off of every sharp point this one's behind, this one's behind, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna worry about mostly the ones at the front that I can see. And I'm gonna come back and do those curves in a minute. They're kind of crazy. But kind of 45 degree angle, every hard line that I can see. And that behind, behind, behind. And this one gets a little weird too. Now. What do we do with the angles and or the round parts? You're going to do the same thing. At the bottom of your stroke, you're going to add a little 45 degree angle and kind of at the top. So wherever 45 comes off of your letter, they're really kind of tough. Another reason I prefer bubble letters. And there's my stroke is here and that's the beginnings now you come back and you connect them and I'll start here and you're gonna draw parallel to the stroke that's already there so I'm drawing parallel to the stroke that's already there mimicking what I have here this one is when you have a letter like this it's a little tricky you're gonna go behind right here and then I'm mimicking every stroke that's already there. So in this case, I'm mimicking the curve of the C, mimicking the curve of the O. And some of these, you just kind of have to use your eyeballs and your brain because it won't be obvious sometimes. There's a little stick back in there, so that was a little weird. And then mim mimicking the curve of the O. 
And this one's back behind it, so you're not gonna have one here. And there's your block shadow. You can color them however you want. I do like to go over them um, with a color so you can really see the hard lines. So I'm gonna go back over these as well with my black. So then you think, Mrs. Ballow, what about the middle of my letters? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky, right? Because the middle of your letters, I just color black. Because that's so hard to make the black shadows on the inside of the letters. For me, it's not worth my brain power. So I just color them black. And then we can get to coloring the letters. Okay, for my letters, I used a red to orange fade uh, because more two colors always looks better. It always looks better when you use two colors. I started with orange and I colored the whole face of my black letters. I colored them orange. Okay, so there's my flat orange. And now I'm gonna come back with the red and I really only wanna bring the red up about halfway. Why? Because that's what I chose. So pick a letter that you want as your reference and start at the bottom with a dark red and then just lighten up as you go. You can always bring your red up a little farther if you want to. Let's start at the bottom with heavy hand pressure and then lighten up as you go up. And you could, if you're using colored pencil, if you wanted to lighten up the top a little bit, you could bring in a yellow. Don't do this with marker because your darkest, your darker orange is already down. You could blend a little yellow here at the top. And then I could either come in here with an orange and make my orange a little darker, burnish it a little bit, which that looks pretty cool, so I think that's what I'll do. All right, as for the shadows, what color do you do them? Rare. You could choose any color you want. You could go crazy with a green or a blue. I'm just gonna come in here with some brown. Um, and maybe do it lighter than I did at the top. And you really could go nuts. You could do a darker brown on the bottom and a lighter brown right here, uh, depending on how much difference you wanted between the faces. Becomes a little tricky here because it's kind of dark at the bottom and then lightens up as you go. So you, you pick your poison. But a flat color all the way around will work for sure. Come back. You can always darken spaces that are light, which is nice. You can't lighten spaces that are dark very easily. That does not work. And then I added a glow around mine. You can do that too. Um, I took my yellow pencil and I started close to the letter, fairly dark, not super dark, but I just went around and kind of outlined every bit in a yellow and then depending on how big you want your outline you come back and expand it and then if you wanted your lighter hand pressure 
Oops, I didn't even do that part. Lighten it up and kind of scumble your way around. There's you some outer glow. That's pretty good looking shadows. I like them. All right. So there are two different types of letters. What if you have to do something super quick and you don't want to take um, or don't have the time to do the block letters? Well, there are three simple things you can do to dress up your letters. One is you can add dots. Dots are awesome. Two, you can add feet. And three, you can darken or thicken the downstrokes. This is also sometimes called fake calligraphy. But take the dots. Every end point of a stroke gets a dot. You can choose whether or not you want to add some at the top and bottom, but every endpoint gets a dot. I would hesitate to add them at the junctions. That makes things a little too busy, but letters do have endpoints up here, like a P does have an endpoint up there. And then an A, technically, if you wanted to add one up here, you could too. So that's a dot, and that makes that very fancy. And it doesn't take very long. You can even add the color, different color dots if you want. The next one is feet. You can give all of your strokes feet. These are called serifs in the world of typography. And this one's kind of hard because my, my A's have a tail. But you can give all the endpoints feet or serifs. And then on this last one, you can add... Uh, a heavier downstroke. So every stroke that goes down gets expanded. And make sure you expand it in the same direction or it's not going to look the right, right way. But everything that goes down gets expanded. It's easier to do in cursive. Um, even the parts of the letters and the curves can be expanded. Fat curves, fat downstrokes. Anything that's a downstroke is fat. And you could even, you can even fatten this one and technically fatten that one. Maybe leave that one undone. Uh, another great, awesome thing that can do to add texture and a little bit of dimension to any set of letters is to just go over them a little bit with your, make them a little fatter. And then add a shadow. Dude, shadows are so simple. Um, get a color that is lighter or contrasting with what you've used. Uh, let's say I will use orange for this blue. And pick a light direction. Let's say, I've been coming up here a lot, so maybe I'll pick my light direction will be, maybe it'll be like this cup. So let me put it cup down. If my light is coming from here right now, the shadow is gonna appear over here. So my shadow is going to go up and that way. So maybe every top and every up. Not this side, but maybe all my shadows go up this time. Shadows add instant depth and fun. Don't forget the insides of your letters. And that's almost automatically more interesting. Oh look, I forgot this one right here. You can also add glows, but this is a super easy way to add some fun to your letters. Yeah, dots, feet, and fat downstrokes. Super fast. Okay, whoa, my hand's really big. I don't know if I can do it okay, and you can see it all. That looks like I'm making a shadow dog. Oh, it's a bunny. Just kidding. Okay, I'm done. 
Before I go, I'd like to tell you guys that we are moving into a period of transition at Mrs. Bella's Messy Desk. Shady Oak, the school that I work for, is finishing out its school year. So after this week, there's gonna be a little blank space in between when you see my big pink head next. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, we're just taking a little break after school is over. So look for new videos coming mm, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, but thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. And to all of you guys behind the scenes, you teachers, you workers, you uh, janitorial staff, everybody keeping everyone here in our county, Fort Bend, and beyond safe, you rock. Yes, folks, eating outside for lunch does have its disadvantages. I don't know. Might be my new do.